Hi, I'm Megan. Today we're going to perform an arterial stick to get an arterial blood gas on this dog. Uh, he has aspiration pneumonia and we are getting some pretty poor readings on our pulse ox and so uh, an arterial blood gas is a really good way to get an accurate understanding of what's actually happening inside his vessels. So I'm going to use a special arterial blood gas syringe. Uh, this syringe has little tiny, tiny, tiny micro holes in the plunger so that it will self fill. So to do this, I'm going to need about a half a mil of blood. So I just pull the plunger back. And then when I poke this into his artery, it will fill on its own. And the air that's now in the syringe will kind of come out of these little holes. Uh, this little white ball here is uh, lithium heparin, so that's going to be the anticoagulant. When you do an arterial blood gas, it's important once you get your sample, you don't want to mix it with any room air. So with this particular syringe, it comes with a setup. Once I get my sample, I'm going to remove the needle from the artery and immediately stick it into here. All the air should be out of the syringe. This is kind of a safety thing where the needle will kind of get stuck in there. Then I'm going to remove the needle and put this little stopper on the end of my syringe so that it doesn't mix with any room air. Now getting a sample from the dorsal pedal artery is probably the easiest way to do it in a dog. So the dorsal pedal artery is uh, usually the best artery to use to get an arterial blood gas. It's on the medial side of the foot distal to the hock. So I've shaved an area and just kind of wiped it with some alcohol, kind of clean any debris that's on his skin. And what I like to do is taking my left hand, which is not the hand that I use to poke, uh, we'll try and locate the artery and feel it pulsing underneath my finger. This dog has had some blood pressure challenges, so it's kind of faint, but I can feel it under my finger. So next, I'm gonna get my syringe ready. And the nice thing about these is that I don't have to worry about moving my hand around with the plunger. I can just steady it. So feel for the pulse. And then kind of using my left hand to, to help guide my right hand, I'm just gonna use a pretty conservative angle. And I'm gonna go through the skin. And find the artery. There's a little bit of crunching. Artery walls are a little tougher than the vein walls, and so you kind of have to, to go through those. There we go. So now the trick is just to hold really still, and you can see that it is self-filling the syringe. When I remove my needle, I'm just going to put pressure over this artery with my left hand that's already on there. I'm going to pull out immediately into there. And then I'm actually going to hand this off. I've got Meredith here. And she's going to immediately take that and run the sample. You don't want arterial samples to wait very long. Again, you don't want them to mix with any room air. So I'm just going to apply some pressure over this artery. I'm going to put this Band-Aid on a little bit tighter than I would if this were a vein, and I'm going to leave it on for about two minutes, and then I can remove it. And hopefully this artery will be useful to us again if we need to recheck, and that's how we get an arterial blood sample.